Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the NFL playoffs taking place this weekend. Let me lead by talking about the Denver Broncos versus the San Diego Chargers. Now, incredibly, in my opinion, the sports books have installed the Denver Broncos as 10 point favorites at home. Right? Here's what you need to know these teams played one month ago. Right? They literally had a game, it was in Denver on Thursday night, December 12th. And what you need to know is that the San Diego Chargers not only came within 10 points of the Denver Broncos, they beat the Denver Broncos 27 to 20. More troubling is the fact that it looks like they solved Denver's offense. Understand, Peyton Manning is best the first time you see him. When you're unfamiliar, when you're in his division and he's just another guy who comes around twice a year, once you figure out the no huddle offense, the fact that he always seems to have a receiver someplace on the field, the uh, level of audibles, once you also solve the high altitude of Denver, and keep in mind, some of your teammates are going to be guys who weigh 300 pounds. That thin oxygen might start to affect them in the third and fourth quarters. Once you figure all of that out, then the game becomes competitive, not lopsided. Right? San Diego, in winning the game, 27-20, to 20, held Denver to less than 300 yards of total offense, right? Denver only had 295 yards of total offense, not passing offense, total offense. Let me point out, too, the Chargers held Denver to 18 rushing yards in the game. 18, right? By contrast, the San Diego Chargers were able to run the ball against an anemic Denver defense. That day they picked up more rushing yards than passing yards. They actually ran the ball for 177 yards. When you have a team that runs the ball as well as San Diego does against Denver, and when you realize that San Diego has already beaten Denver in Denver, in my opinion, this 10-point line is a joke. I like the San Diego Chargers getting 10 points against the Denver Broncos this weekend. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about other plays I think you need to consider. Right? Understand that the Indianapolis Colts are going to New England to play the New England Patriots. If New England wins this game, then they're in the AFC Championship game, literally one game away from making it to the Super Bowl. Now, New England's favored by seven and a half points that's a lot let me just say this though while I don't like the point spread the point spreads iffy I like New England to win this game and here's where futures betters need to take a hard look at this New England team if you agree with me that New England at home beats a Colt team that just gave up more than 40 points, right? Then you need to take the futures prop being offered by the casino right now that has New England as something like a 7-1 to one or 8-1 to one long shot to win the Super Bowl. You know how we roll. 
right? Once you get that position with leverage, right? Bet one dollar to win eight bucks. Once you get that leverage, then you could always hedge out of the play later. Keep in mind, if New England wins this game, there are only two more games after this. AFC Championship game and Super Bowl, right? You'll have plenty of hedging opportunities, and you'll also have a huge amount of leverage to play with. So my recommendation with regard to New England is to take them on the futures prop. That way you're not laying seven and a half points, but you're getting in on a team that quite frankly has an outside shot to host the AFC Championship game. Let's shift gears just a little bit more. Now, longtime viewers here online know that I was touting the Carolina Panthers when they were a 50 to 1 long shot to win the Super Bowl. Right? So, because I picked up leverage early in the year, right, my play is already made for me. In other words, I'm going to hedge against Carolina here by having a small position on the 49ers. But if you're just betting on this game and you're not fooling around with long-term hedges where you've gotten leverage and now you're just cashing out a bit, if you're just betting on this game, I like the underdog, Carolina Panthers, to win this game outright right I expect Carolina to win this game Carolina beat San Francisco in San Francisco earlier this year I'm still not completely sold on Colin Kaepernick I think he has all of the physical traits necessary to be an elite quarterback he certainly is a great athlete he certainly has a strong arm he certainly is accurate with the football but the problem he has is a lack of experience that shows he doesn't make the reads quickly enough I don't see him really doing the checkdowns fast enough it shows in the numbers people who have watched the Green Bay Packers all year knew that Green Bay was defensively challenged. In other words, their defense gave up a lot of points. Their defense had holes. Their defense wasn't even healthy. Now, I know it was cold out, no question about it, but I still don't like the fact that all San Francisco could put up against this Green Bay defense was 214 net passing yards, right? 214. Also ask yourself, Colin Kaepernick, behind the Niner line, mobile quarterback, wouldn't you expect him to be able to avoid getting sacked? What was he doing getting sacked three times? by the Green Bay defense, right? The numbers, quite frankly, aren't that great from San Francisco's win over Green Bay. Understand San Francisco did it really rushing the football. They had 167 rushing yards. But passing the football, there's still concerns. And of course, they're going up against Carolina in Carolina. Carolina has one of the league's elite defenses. Carolina has one of the league's best pass rushing units. Just ask Eli Manning. Look at the stats from that Carolina Eli Manning game. Also, Cam Newton is simply dynamite at home. I know there's concern about Steve Smith. Understand he has his tight end. Understand he has LaFell. Understand he has a running game. Understand he himself can run the football. <coughs> I'm surprised 
that Carolina is an underdog in this game. I like Carolina here to win this game outright. Those are the plays I like. Let me just say this too. Seattle, New Orleans, in Seattle. Again, I don't like to play with big lines in the playoffs. Seven and a half seems a bit rich to me. I'm going to stay away from that line. But I like Seattle to win the game. I think Russell Wilson is an elite quarterback. One of the biggest problems that New Orleans has is that they didn't play their last game in San Francisco. They weren't in the Pacific time zone. Rather, they played their last game in Philadelphia, three time zones away. So now you're telling me they're going to hop on a plane and go to the Pacific Northwest and play a rested and ready Seattle Seahawks team. Folks, Russell Wilson, and I say Russell Wilson unlike Archie 3, unlike Andrew Luck, won a playoff game last year on the road. Right, The other guys didn't even win a playoff game last year. Russell Wilson won a playoff game on the road. His team is the team that knocked out the Washington Redskins. And if you go back and if you look at that game, you'll notice that Seattle was down early. All you need to know about Russell Wilson is here he was, a young guy, down early. And he started dealing. Let me just say this too. The game they lost to the Atlanta Falcons that's on the defense, right? Russell Wilson gives them a lead late, and then the defense gave it back. I think Russell Wilson is an elite quarterback. The difference between last year and this year is last year he had to do it on the road. This year, he's going to have tens of thousands of home fans with him in Seattle, one of the toughest places in the league for an opposing team to play. Let me also say this too. You know, I don't like the idea of New Orleans outside. Now, I know it worked out last week against Philly. Barely. They win the game by two points. Right? Well, understand, now they're going to go outside in cold weather right against a team who they've already lost to in the playoffs in their stadium. Keep in mind, too, we can have a lot of respect for Rob Ryan, the Saint defensive coordinator. But isn't this his first year as the Saint defensive coordinator? Also, don't you have concerns with some of the injuries that the Saints have, right? Aren't some of their running backs a bit banged up? Also, wide receivers like Marquise Colston, physical. Not the fastest guy on the field, but tall and physical. Guess what? There is no more tall and physical secondary in this entire league than the Seahawks secondary. I expect the Seahawks to win that game. I'm expecting the Seahawks to host the NFC Championship game, right? But I don't like the 7.5 point spread. That makes me squeamish. So I'm just going to look at that game from a money line perspective, okay? That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. I know there's a Denver contingent that follows my videos. Let me just say this. <coughs> there are four teams left in the AFC. Three of the four have beaten the Denver Broncos this year. Right? Look it up. Do the math. Right? Denver, the road is going to be bumpy. By the way, Denver is the fourth team.
Thanks for stopping by. Let me know your thoughts both before, during, even after the game. Thanks for stopping by.